Technically, the issue is not even on the ballot yet, but the campaigns for and against public employee collective bargaining limits are taking shape. The two sides have started to hire campaign staffs. A top Republican leader in the state Senate, who is a supporter of Senate Bill 5, is leaving office. Jimmy Stewart of Southeast Ohio announced this week he is leaving, giving up his post of majority leader. He says it's for a great job in the private sector, president of the Ohio Gas Association. Democrats say it's because of this, a big billboard in his district and harsh criticism for supporting Senate Bill 5. So Jim Siegel, where's the truth here? Do we know? Um, I don't, I'm pretty sure he didn't leave because of Senate Bill 5 by any exclusive measure at all. Um, I've talked, to, now I, we, we talked with uh, Jimmy Stewart uh, here this week and, and he said no, it had nothing to do with Senate Bill 5. I'd vote for it all over again if I could. Uh, this is about me finding a better job in the private sector. And really, I mean, he's going to head the, the Ohio Gas Association. I mean, he, he could double his salary there, I don't mm -hmm. think, without any trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I will also say I've talked to folks who know him in, in, in the Republican circles, and they say, you know, he didn't seem to have the fire in the belly anymore that he, that he ha maybe had mm -hmm. when he first came in. And so they weren't really surprised that he had left. And they thought, well, this Senate Bill 5 criticism and stuff coming down on top of the fact that he wasn't real mm -hmm. excited about the job anymore, maybe just sort of said, well, maybe it's time I, 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 I look a little harder at, at something else. Gene Krebs is someone who has left the legislature. What, mm -hmm. are, your, you, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I, think, I, think, I think Jim's very, very good on this. That if A, remember, he had nine counties. That means he has nine party chair people to listen to and get yelled at on a daily basis. He has nine county fairs that each last a week long each. That's a lot of cotton candy to stuff down. And he has 27 county commissioners he has, to, and they all want a piece, and probably four gazillion school board members and village officials who all want a piece of him. Uh, in talking to rural legislators from out in the, in, the, in the rural area, they go, this job, if you want to do it well, you burn out. Mm -hmm. And I think to a certain degree, I think Jimmy just went, you're either in your first or last term in the, in the state Senate because of the term limits. And he went, I'm going to get out of here. What I love is how the Democrats say, uh, Jimmy Stewart, he's the deciding vote on collective bargaining. Well, yeah. it was a 17 to 16 vote. You yeah. can say that about any yeah. of the 17, yeah. and they will. Oh, yeah, Next they will. year in the election yeah. in certain districts, they're going to go, Joe Schmo, he was the deciding vote. Vote him out of office. Just like 1983 and the Celeste tax increase. Republicans why, did it to the Democrats. That's yeah. also yeah. why you almost never see a bill come out of the Senate, 17-16. Right. Senate presidents try to protect their members yes. by having at least 18 votes so no one can be called the deciding vote. This mm -hmm. was a very rare exception. Well, he had to, the billboard was a perfect example. He had to see that even if he had sought re-election, that mm -hmm. this was going to be a, a nasty fight, Catherine. And that, you know, even, if, even if you would vote for it again, you may not want to go through that. Well, and uh, when, when you were talking about all the, you know, the, having a number of counties and just all of those pressures, I also think that there, there's a lot of pressure to vacate seats before the election. Mm -hmm. uh, that notion of, like, it allows for that what I think of as the musical chairs. Yeah. Okay, you know, if I leave now, we can get an appointee in who then runs as an incumbent. They'll ha that person has a record. I think that's the other thing is, you know, part of it is like, well, why now? And why now could just be, you know, tired could be a good job, but on top of that, this is a good point to get out for somebody new. No, I, I, because it's like seven months too early. And if you want to <laughs> do that, you do that in November, or December. And it, I mean, it took, it, it takes Jimmy six and a half hours to drive from Pomeroy to Belmont yeah. County, and it's all back roads with coal trucks coming over on your side of the line all the time. And it's just not, it, it, it's, it's a difficult job to do. Let's get to, the, get a job, to other we'll, senators and what they might face in the next year year or so as they look to re-election in reps. What kind of fallout will Senate Bill 5 have on them? The election is this November, so they have a year separation from the actual vote, win or lose. I assume Democrats are going to go after these Republican senators who voted for it, and, re and reps as well. Which is why the stakes are so high for them this November. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they, if they put that referendum up and, it goes, and the referendum fails and Senate Bill 5 stands, what kind of position are you going to have to attack Republicans who are already generally in safe in safe seats, probably even safer seats once the lines are redrawn, mm -hmm. and they're going to have Republicans are again going to have a tremendous yeah. money advantage, uh, particularly yeah. in the Senate. Uh, <laughs> so the House know. will probably have one too, uh, probably not quite as big. So this that's why this November is so critical for the Democrats in order to keep that issue alive uh, for 2012. Yeah, and the Democrats have a honest framing and branding problem with the Senate Bill 5, and that is they spent the past 20 years railing against the privileged class, or the privileged class, the wealthy, Wall Street bankers, whatever. 
it takes a very short jump for Republicans then to start saying, well, the privileged class is actually your public sector worker. You know, and but in most today's of us know economy, a public sector worker though isn't that a stretch <laughs> to go from a Wall Street banker to your, the teacher oh, next those, door? Oh, those wealthy po po policemen and teachers. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, when you have when you when you, when you have when you have part-time school bus drivers making forty-eight thousand a year, okay, including the bennies, mm -hmm. um, and Bobby Betty Buckeye out there is trying. You know, they're working two jobs and they're making twelve dollars an hour, not twenty dollars an hour. They're going to go whoa. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Is so, is there a branding problem here? Even even if the Democrats win one, two, or three seats in the state Senate, even if they win three seats, which would be incredible, <laughs> they'll still be in the minority, 20 to 13. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know that there's a, overall a huge political fallout yeah. here with the Stewart. And uh, you heard me say this before. Out of 132 General Assembly seats, 106 of them have an index of 53 above or, and or 47 below. They're just simply out of range. As far as that's the margin of victory. Yeah.